Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to speak to you about your self-saboteur. <laughs> we all have one and there's many things that it gets called, but it's that part of you that criticises and tries to keep you in your box. It's the bit that undermines things when you try something new. Now, it all stems from your subconscious because the subconscious, as I've mentioned many times, the whole sole purpose of the subconscious is to ensure your safety and your survival. And it does this by creating thoughts, which then trigger emotions, which then trigger actions. And when your subconscious perceives that you're stepping out into an unknown world, or if you're stepping into a dangerous situation that it has through past experience in your life has built up a, a database that this particular situation is scary or unfriendly or threatening in any way, then it will produce thoughts. And those thoughts come across as doubt, self-doubt, self-criticism, self-recrimination, and all sorts of things to help, well, to try and get you to step back into your safe space, into the safe zone, so that you don't get yourself into trouble. Now, it seems like it's a good theory. Um, however, the more that we listen to those voices, the more we listen to the fear of the world, the more we step back from really living and end up living an isolated, sheltered, safe existence. Which might sound like a good plan, other than the fact that living a sheltered, isolated, safe existence is not very exciting. It's not really living. It's not allowing you to expand yourself into all that you could possibly be. So if you do decide that you want to start stepping out, and the reason I'm speaking about this actually is because I've been making a number of decisions recently, um, letting things go in my life, stepping into new jobs, hopefully, <laughs> and all sorts of things. And I can see my own self-saboteur coming up as I do these things. And knowing it, knowing what it sounds like, knowing what it feels like, will help you to navigate that for what it is. As usual, it's all about awareness. When you're aware of something, then you can make a different choice. So for me, um, for somebody who grew up moving different continents quite often in my life to different situations and different places, I know that my self-saboteur, the voice in my head, tells me that I don't belong, that I don't fit in, that there's something wrong with me, <laughs> that um, I don't know what I'm doing, that um, I'm not enough. And it has a litany of the same kind of thing that it goes through most times when I'm challenging myself. I've listened to it so many times in the past that I know what it sounds like. I know the, the sort of sequence of conversations that go through my head in these situations. And when I hear it, knowing that I know what it is, I know that I don't have to listen to it. It's like its hold on me isn't so strong anymore, because the more that I'm aware of it, the more I know that it comes from my subconscious just trying to keep me safe. The more I'm aware that it isn't really the truth of me. It's not the truth of who I am. All it is, is my subconscious using my own fears against me to try and keep my world small and safe. And I don't choose that. I want to live an expanded life. I want to explore this world. I want to have fun, different experiences. Even if they are scary, I still want to have them. I want that choice. And so I choose not to listen to it. It doesn't mean that it goes away. It does get fainter. It doesn't get as insistent because I know that I have power over it rather than it having power over me. Now for you, what you need to do is really look back through your life if you want to become more aware of it and to notice the patterns of that conversation in your head when you've done things that have challenged you in the past. You know, what is the story you tell yourself about yourself when you're about to do something that is a little unsettling and a little unnerving? And the more that you get used to what the pattern of the conversation is, because it's different for everyone, because we've all had different experiences, we all have different fears. And when you know the pattern of that conversation, when you start hearing it over and over again, you can choose whether to listen to it and step back, whether it's actually speaking sense, which to be honest, I can't say that I've ever noticed it does, or whether to ignore it and to step fully into your life and to embrace the world and all its fears, all its uncertainties, and know that by doing that, you're truly living. 
Now, I'm not going to go into this particularly in this particular episode, but also know that learning the different voices that go on inside of you, the different conversations is very important because there is a sixth sense in you when you're stepping into something that really is threatening and dangerous. It's a very different conversation that goes on in your head. And that is one that you really should listen to. So you need to get to know what those different conversations are, to get to know which ones are the truth and which ones are just a fabrication of your subconscious. Because making an error in those two things is quite critical. So it's very important that you know what that conversation is so that you get to ignore the right one. I hope this has helped you in stepping into your life and living it fully. Um, I'm going to be doing a new Ho'oponopono um, session soon on a monthly basis to help people overcome their blocks and their fears and things that are stopping them in their lives. If you're interested in that or any of my online courses or my coaching, there's links to all of it below in the show notes. Have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.